Well, hello everyone. I have a question for you today. Are you living your God-given potential? Are you living up to your God-given potential? You might be wondering, what in the world does that mean? Well, hi, I'm Brian Ashpole, pastor at Honolulu Assembly of God, here in beautiful Honolulu, near world-famous Diamond Head. It's Wednesday, February 17th, and I'm excited, friends. I'm excited as I am every week because we're looking at incredible scripture passages all this month of February that have the potential to be life-changing. That's right, friends. That is right. If you apply these powerful truths to your life, they can change your life. And today's powerful, life-changing truth comes from John chapter 10. John chapter 10. So, well, let's think about that question. Are you living your God-given potential? Are you living up to your God-given potential? You might be wondering what in the world I'm talking about. The Bible is very clear. God created you, friends. God created you. Now, you can deny that. You can reject it. You can declare that life is, and everything else is all about evolution. But if you do, however, if you do, you will miss out on a valuable truth, a life-changing truth. God created you, friends, not to be just another face in the crowd, 7.8 billion people in this world. God didn't create you to be just another person. He created you to be unique. He created you to stand out. You are one of a kind, friends. You're one of a kind, and, and the Lord knows you intimately. He knows you inside and out. Psalm 139, great psalm, tells us that the Lord knows our comings. He knows our goings. He knows when, the psalm says, I, He knows when I sit and when I rise up. He, he knows all these things. Jesus tells us that even the very hairs of our head are numbered. And you know, we're losing hair every day, so the Lord is keeping daily track of our hairs. It's not a head count. It's a hair count. <laughs> and some of us are harder to keep up with than others because we're losing a lot of hair. So friends, God knows you intimately. He knows you inside and out. So you don't have, need to try to fit in with a crowd. You, don't let peer pressure control your life, friends. Peer pressure is especially controlling of us when we are young, but you know, it can show up when we're older. You know, it can show up at any age and you were created to stand out. So my question for you is, why are you trying so hard to fit in? Why are you trying so hard to fit in? Be the unique person God has created you to be. You don't need to try to be like someone else. That other person already has that job. They already have that person. They already have that. They already have that purpose. And we don't need two of them. We need one of them and one of you. They are to be like them, and you are to be like you. You're to be like you. Don't fall into the trap of comparison, friends. Comparison is deadly. Nothing good ever comes from comparing yourself to someone else. Either they will wind up on the losing end or you will. And it's usually you because we're often very hard on ourselves. But friends, the Lord created you. He knows you. He has a purpose for you. There is a God-given purpose just for you. There's a God-given potential just for you. And you will never find your God-given purpose. You'll never fulfill your God-given potential apart from a relationship with Jesus Christ. You can only find, you can only fulfill your God-given purpose your, and reach your God-given potential as part of a relationship with Jesus Christ. Only He can help you. Only He can empower you. Only He can help you get there. Now, this is where we turn to John chapter 10, verse 10. And it's a great passage. Uh, I, I think I've even used it before. It's a powerful truth, life-changing truth. Uh, I brought my Bible, but I don't even need to read it because I, I know it by heart. John 10, 10, Jesus declares, The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But I have come, Jesus said, that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Now let's look at the first part of that. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Satan is very good at what he does, friends. He's very good at what he does. He leaves ruin. He leaves death. He leaves destruction in his past. He leaves devastation wherever he goes. He will offer you wonderful promises, friends. Did you hear that? He will offer you wonderful promises, but he will never fulfill them. They are designed instead to ruin you. You're only a means to an end for him, for Satan. Jesus loves you. Jesus is 
was willing to go to the cross on your behalf. He was really willing to die in your place. And the result is because Jesus loves you, because Jesus values you. The incredible value that Christ puts upon you. Because of that, Satan hates you and he wants to destroy you. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus goes on in John chapter 10, verse 10, to say, But I, I have come that you might have life and might have it more abundantly, might have it to the full, might have, you might reach the, the, the richest potential that you could ever know. That's what Jesus has for, for you and me. Now, growing up, I have to admit, I did not understand that statement. But one day, the truth dawned on me. See, years ago, when I was a youth pastor, I hosted a rock seminar with an evangelist who had come out of the rock music field. Now, let me preface this by saying that I, I like rock music, even to this day. I, there, there were some great groups that I used to listen to back in the day, and I, I still enjoy them. There's nothing wrong with that. But there is a genre of rock music that is known as satanic rock. Satanic rock, and that is what the evangelist was talking about. He had come out of that background, and so he knew what he was talking about. I was surprised by how many teenagers, how many rockers, uh, you know, they look pretty serious from our community, came to the meeting. I mean, I didn't know most of them. The sanctuary of the church that, where I was youth pastor was full of kids. The evangelist opened the meeting by announcing, listen to this, friends. If I said something negative about your parents, most of you would not say a word. You would not blink at me. But, he went on to say, but if I said something negative about your favorite rock group, you would probably be ready to tear me to pieces. Well, the response of the kids there affirmed his observation. He was right on what he was saying. So he gave a great presentation, and after his message, he invited kids to the altar uh, to turn their lives over to Jesus Christ. And, and many did. It was just a, an amazing time. But I vividly remember praying with one young lady who was very conflicted. In fact, the evangelist joined me with praying for her. And I sensed she knew she needed to surrender her life to Jesus, but she was not ready to let go of her rock music obsession. And it really was an obsession. She referred to a, a particular rock star that was very popular at the time whose identity I, I don't even remember. I don't even remember who it was. And she said, this is what was amazing. She said with absolute certainty that that rock star loved her. That rock star loved her. I was astounded by her fantasy. She was persuaded this rock star loved her. He wanted her. He cared for her. I, I declared to her, you know, I listened for a while, but finally I, I declared to her as gently, but as firmly as I could, that that rock star did not know her. He would probably never meet her. She would never meet him. He would never love her. She was merely a consumer of his music. You know, he, I mean, I'm sure he was pretty thankful for the money she and all the millions of other kids spent. But he didn't know her. He would never know her. He would certainly never love her. But... But there was someone, friends, someone who loved her. Someone who loved her so much that he was willing to give his life on her behalf. He was willing to die in her place. And he had the best possible life for her that she could ever imagine to her. I declared to her, John 10.10. 10, and that is when the truth of that declaration took hold of me. It dawned me. And I mean, it, it, the reality really hit me. Friends, Jesus Christ has a life that is planned for you. It is designed just for you. It's designed just for you. Hear me now, friends. And you will never know that potential. You'll never know the beauty, the wonder of that life, that God-given potential that Christ has for you. You'll never know that apart from a relationship with Jesus Christ. You could search high and low. You could look here and there. You could seek this pursuit or that one. But you will never find it on your own, friends. You could accomplish many things. You could have your name up in life. You could be the goat that we talked about last Wednesday. The greatest of all time. But that will never be enough. It will never be enough. Only Jesus can give you what you need. Only Jesus can give you what you are longing for. Only Jesus can give you what you were created for, what he designed you for. Only he can help you fulfill your God-given identity and reach that God-given potential. 
See, the Lord not only designed you for a beautiful, specific purpose, He equips you to accomplish it. He empowers you. He provides you with everything you need to accomplish it. Now listen to the words of Max Lucado, author extraordinaire. Anything he writes is, is really amazing. Max is an example of God's work, exactly what we're talking about. He's an example of fulfilling his God-given purpose. God is fulfilling that purpose in Max's life. The Lord has made Max Lucado a master of words. And listen to what he has to say. See, uh, he's written many books, and one of them is a, is a daily devotional. You know, just an inspirational thought for every day of the year, 365 days a year. It's entitled, God is with you every day. And I read that every morning, along with my Bible reading for my early morning prayer time, Bible and prayer time. And it's just a blessing. And this one was for just a, a couple of weeks ago, well, 11 days ago, February 6th. And Max entitled it, Use Your Eunice. Why <laughs> Y-O-U, Use Your Eunice. And he refers to 1 Timothy 4, 14. Do not neglect the gift that is in you. Listen to what Max declares. No one else has your Eunice. No one else in all history has your unique history. No one else in God's great design has your divine design. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? No one else shares your blend of personality, ability, and ancestry. When God made you, the angels stood in awe and declared, we've never seen one like that before, and they never will again. Oh, man, that's incredible. You are heaven's first and final attempt at you. You are matchless, you are unprecedented, and unequaled. Consequently, you can do something no one else can do in a fashion no one else can. Call it what you wish, a talent, a skill set, a gift, an anointing, a divine spark, an unction, a call. The terms are different, but the truth is the same. Quote, the Spirit has given each of us a special way of serving others. Unquote, 1 Corinthians 12, 7. Each of us, not some of us, a few of us, or the lead among us, Many people stop short of their destiny. They settle for someone else's story. They fit in, settle in, and blend in. But they never find their call. Don't make the same mistake. Your existence is not accidental. Your skills are not incidental. God, quote, shaped each person in turn, unquote. Psalm 33, verse 15. Find your Eunice and use it for the kingdom. Wow, what a beautiful statement from Max Lucado. Really incredible. You see how God is using his life. And friend, God wants to use your life. He wants you to reach that same potential to be seeking after and enjoying a new adventure, a new uh, incredible experience with him each and every day. Don't miss out on that, friends. Isn't that beautiful, friends? That is powerful. That can be life-changing for you. That can change your life. I want to ask you that question again. Are you living your God-given potential? Are you living up to your God-given potential? Don't let Satan distract you from your God-given potential. Don't let him uh, uh, take you on a detour away from that, friends. Remember, Satan wants to ruin you. The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy you. As I mentioned, he's very good at what he does. And don't try to reach your potential in your own strength and, and, and try to do it in your own abilities, friends. There, you know, there are many motivational coaches that will try to tell you you can accomplish anything if you put your mind to it, if you try hard enough to do it. Those coaches can probably help you do many things. They can probably help you do a lot, maybe more than you can do on your own. But only Jesus Christ can help you reach your God-given potential. Only Jesus Christ can help you to reach that life that's on a plane that, that you can, will never, on a, on a level that you will never reach on your own or with anyone else's help. Only God can help you do that through His Son, Jesus Christ. Only He can do that. Not you, not anyone else. I mean, I, I couldn't help you. I couldn't, I couldn't help myself. Only Jesus can do it. Oh, friends, isn't that beautiful? That can be life-changing for you. Now help me out here. Is Jesus Christ in charge of your life? Is he, is he controlling your life? Is he your Lord and Master? 
Have you surrendered your life completely to him? That's the place to start. That's where to begin, friends. Repent of your sin. Declare Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. Put all your trust in, in him, in Jesus Christ. And do it today, friends. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Don't put it off. You know, that's, that's just the enemy trying you to get you to miss out on this wonderful life that, that God has for you in his, in his son, Jesus Christ. Don't, don't put it off. Do it today. And maybe you've done that. And maybe you have a response to what I shared today. Would you please leave a comment? I really want to hear from you. And please let me know. Please let me know how you're doing. Wherever you are, wherever you're watching, please leave me a message. Whether it's on our, our website, honoluag.org. Looking great. Beautiful beach theme. Our Facebook page, which is probably where most of you are. Uh, we have a lot of people that are seeing on our Facebook. And if, 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 if you haven't gotten there yet, just go to Facebook and search for Honolulu AG. Or our YouTube page. Maybe that's more convenient for you if you're not on social media. Just go to YouTube and search for Holy Assembly of God. And, and friends, would you give us a like on Facebook or subscribe on uh, YouTube? That would be great. And please, friends, please share our website, our Facebook, our YouTube resource with others so they can be encouraged, friends, also. If you've, if you've been blessed and, and inspired, if you've been encouraged, if you've learned something today, would you please share that with someone else so they can be blessed and inspired and encouraged too? Well, we're going to go to prayer in just a moment. But before we do, let me share something else with you that I'm excited about, as I am every week, and that's this Sunday, February 17th. I'm going to challenge us all, including myself and you, to take a stand. Take a stand. In an increasingly dark, uh, increasingly antagonistic world of Christianity, what can we as Christians do? How do we respond to all the pushback? That's something that we'll need to step up with. And please join us in person. Join us in the building if you can. Hold on the Assembly of God. Kai Maki. Or join us online. And uh, we'll be live again this week on Facebook. And it'll be uploaded. The service will be uploaded later that day uh, to YouTube and also to our website. So you can see it there also. Well, you're ready to pray, friends. You're ready to do it? Let's, let's do it. Let's, let's pray, friends. Lord, help me to surrender to you. Lord, I want to give my life to you, lay my life fully surrendered to you so that I can reach that potential. I can experience that God-given potential that you have for me, Lord, that I can never experience any, anywhere else, any place else. Lord, no one else can help me do that. I can't do it. I can't do it for myself. Only you can help me do that, Lord. I want that life. I want that God-given potential. I want, to, I want to step up and stand tall for you and for your kingdom. And I pray for that, Lord, for everyone watching. Every man, every woman, every young person, every boy, every girl. I pray, Lord, that they might know the life that you have for them. You've designed for each and every single one of them that they can never find anywhere apart from you. We thank you, Lord, for offering us that wonderful invitation. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit that helps us, helps us reach that, helps us to accomplish that. Thank you, Lord, for that. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, God bless you. Jesus loves you. And aloha, aloha, keakua. God bless you more. There's more life-changing truth coming up right here, right where you're watching, friends. So I look forward to seeing you again next time. Until then, bye-bye. God bless Aloha. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.